Welcome to DIY Builds, we are going to build a laser machine today. Get down! Today I'm going to show you how I added this 5 watt laser to my homemade CNC machine. It utilizes a selector switch to toggle between the laser or the spindle using the M3, M5 commands for turning it on and off. So the first thing I need to do is transfer the hole locations of the heat sink of the laser onto a small aluminum plate. I'm going to use this to mount directly onto my Z-axis so the laser stays in place at 90 degrees and will be able to move up and down with the Z-axis. I then center punch and drill the four holes out, countersinking the back to make room for the pan head screws. On the next L-shaped piece of aluminum bracketry, I drill out the center hole. This is how I'm going to mount the switch, which will toggle between the laser and the router. In order to attach the aluminum plate to the laser itself, I needed to use four screws, which I got from a computer because it's the only thread I could find that matched. Next I mark out what material needs to be removed from the two cable hold downs on the side of the gantry as we're going to be adding a cable here for the laser to run all the way from the control cabinet up to the Z axis. These two pieces are taken off and then trimmed up with the bandsaw and then a hole is cut where all the other cables go up into the Z axis. Next I can start fishing the cable through the lower drag chain which is the drag chain for the Y axis. Now that the cable is out of the y-axis drag chain, I can start organizing the cables up the side of the gantry and screw down that piece that I freshly widened on the bandsaw. I then run the cable up the side of the gantry and feed it through that new hole which leads directly into the x-axis drag chain and I can fish that all the way out the end, coming back to attach that other widened piece to clamp down the cables at the top. I then remove the old electrical tape which kind of held the midsections in place and I just simply add some more electrical tape around all of the cables this time. Now that the cable for the laser is run up to the z-axis, it needs to be held down in the exact same way using the same clamps as the router cable. We're just going to widen this hole and clamp them both in place together. With two small holes drilled in the aluminum plate, I first attach the top hole and then with a square I'm going to check for perpendicular to the table in both directions and put the bottom screw in place once it's squared up. So the cable I ran up is actually 8 conductor, 22 gauge, and we only need 4 conductors for the 4 on the laser, 2 for the fan, 2 for the laser diode itself. So 4 of these conductors will get cut off and the other four will get connected one for one matching each color except for gray will become white. In the event that anything should have to move or anything like that I create a small loop with the extra cable, zip tie it in place and start stripping the ends and getting ready to solder each connection and covering it with heat shrink. With all the upper stuff done, I can slide off the air filter and work on getting this cable into the control cabinet. Luckily there was enough room between this clamping piece and then the silicone I was able to kind of spread out and just shove the cable right in there. Next I can mark out the hole locations, pre-drill and screw down the bracket for holding the selector switch for switching between laser and router. Next I attach the laser control board in the exact same way, two screws top and bottom. And then I needed to drill a super wide hole for the DC power connector. This is kind of a quick connect for the 3 amp 12 volt power supply. Now the rest of the wiring was completed off camera. Here's a quick overview of what the final result looks like. 
but now we're going to go over in detail the wiring diagram. So here's the wiring diagram for my CNC, which you may remember from my other videos. Here is the new wiring diagram, which you can see is extremely similar, but there are a few differences down here in the bottom. Let's take a look at those now. So as you can see, we still have the router, which goes through the 40 amp rated contactor and gets plugged into the power bar. The coil of that contactor is still controlled by the 12 volt power adapter, which runs through the relay on the CNC control board. It utilizes the normally open and the common contacts on the board. This, however, is now running through this double pole, double throw switch at the same time as the laser control board for the laser diode. The laser control board is powered by a 3 amp 12 volt DC power adapter and the wires coming out of it, there are four, blue and gray are for the laser diode, red and black run through the laser fan. This is a switch I need to add in after the fact because the laser fan was staying on even when I was using the router. Now that the wiring is complete, I can put the filter back in place and fire up the computer and see if anything lets the smoke out. I can then load up Mach 3 and using the manual on off button for the spindle, I can select between the laser and the router, turning them each on and off. Now that I know the wiring works, I now want to set up a story stick at 6 inches. This is where I'm going to set the focus of my laser for whatever material thickness I have. The last thing to do is to slap on the safety glasses so you don't totally blind yourself and see spots for the rest of your life, and then focus in the laser by twisting the lens up and down to get it just right into the smallest point possible.